Good afternoon, morning, my friends. It is Friday, my dudes, which is not Wednesday, which is normally when I know this is, I know it's strange, but I've been very busy in the background with a couple of nice, awesome things for you guys. There's some Eve Sports stuff very, very close. Next week, Monday, we are going to be announcing something very special and nice for our local esports people. So that's it's 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 soon it's soon tm everything is ready to go for that and i'm still going to be doing reviews as per normal i'm going to try and get another one out for tomorrow and then another one uh for monday and then we'll go back to tuesday wednesday thursday sort of or tuesday wednesday friday sort of setup so yeah we are getting back on track yeah i haven't forgotten about you i'm so sorry the bias got us late because on uncle eve tech store the winter specials have released they're here they have landed and they are considerable all 113 of them and i'm going to go category by category uh some of them very quickly and you know we'll we'll whisk through them and then for the laptop section i've actually selected a couple from there that i think are really good price versus performance really good bang for buck so sit back relax and let's get into it case fans aeolus stuff it's pretty good gum ds works it's very cheap very cheap <laughs> it's very cheap what it is comes with the control unit as well so if you don't have rgb inherently in the pc you can rgb it from the controller which is sort of nice your fan speed is also controlled from there there's no pwm or anything like that but they are very cheap for the cpu coolers we've got a nice i just love this thing because if you've got like a very entry level cooler like if you've got a baseline like out of box intel cooler for instance this will thump it it will be a lot better and especially if you're running like a little six or eight core setup like that like this is like the baseline for that i'd say like if you've got a little six core and you just want something better than the out of box cooler then grab yourself this little ice edge mini i just love it it's so cute it's so little and small i do like the i do like the size but i mean amongst these coolers there are some really good coolers so primarily the xion at 130 is like sick value right now very very cheap for what that is but this guy over here if you just want something a bit premium and you want something that's going to last you um, a little bit of time this comes with a five-year warranty because it's got ek's like cheap d5 pump inside the head over here and the performance as a result of that is astronomically good as far as closed loops go this is one of the top performers and it really entered like that if you don't believe me you can go check it out also on gamers nexus with their standardized testing which is a lot more advanced than even what i do or a lot more advanced because i've got a team of like nine people but and i'm just me but <laughs> If you look at that review and that test, this thing for the price is astronomically good. Moving on to gaming accessories, we've got a couple of desks over here. The Nitro series ones are actually really nicely set up. They've got channeling underneath them and stuff. And at the price point, they actually make a lot of sense. If you go to Macro to buy a stupid table that doesn't isn't a full mouse like pad on top that doesn't have all of that you're gonna pay like two grand to buy a just a rubbish normal sort of office desk, but this are two grand it's completely set up for your usage and then the Arosi is quite a bit bigger it's, it's a very long big desk so if you've got like triple monitor set up and stuff maybe that one will be for you but these nitros nitro concepts is just viciously viciously underrated honestly for me similar thing with the chairs the nitros again popping up at me those are like really good ones to look at nobles are incredibly good build quality wise they are some of the best product finish you'll find but yeah the price is going to go along with that so if you want something more median uh in price honestly look at the nitros they are super super sick graphics cards i'm not expecting too much because a lot have been on sale recently but the 6600 it's six and a half is like ridiculously good on price this is basically the new 1060 like uh, what that was five years ago is what the 6600 is bringing to the market the price versus performance right now is just kind of stiff it's unmatched which is weird because team green doesn't hasn't really done well with their scaling it's way better than the 3050 and it's not quite as good as the 3060 but the price is like way closer to the 3050 it's 300 bucks and that difference in performance is going to be 15 to 20 percent nearly on average so yeah this is like really good bang for buck hard drives there are two nice actually ones i'm, I'm mostly impressed by this 5tb portable drive at one and a half so if you need a backup or something like that 
Um, for those of you who don't know, it, magnetic storage can last like 10 years without power running through it, up to 15 even. So I, I've got a 2TB that I use in the same way. I only turn it on when I need it. Otherwise, it sits in a drawer. It's gone through two enclosures, but the drive's 10 years old and it's still 100% health because I don't overuse it. So you could do that as a backup and then a 4TB 256 meg cache, which is going to be really nice for loading up games and stuff. I might actually cop one of those because, yeah, my my 4TB is not and loading up COD sucks. As far as the headsets go, the two that really are jumping out at me from a list, I mean, the Kraken um, a, a, a X at this sort of price is very good and they're grand. They, those are going to be hard to beat. But these two over here, specifically, the Arctis 7 Wireless and the Blackshock V2 Pro, both of these are like quite a bit more you know, normally. This is closer to like 2.6, 2.7. This is like closer to about 2.4, 2 2.5. So price is really good right now. It's um, come down quite a lot and the, these are just really, really, especially honestly between the two, I would probably go for the Black Shock V2 because it's not, this is not an Arctis 7P, which is just a better of this in every single way. But Black Shock V2 Pro, from this list at least, Black Shock V2 Pro, by far the choice to make keyboards nothing too much to write home about um the homies are nice they're really good bang for buck uh it's 600 bucks they basically unbeatable like price quality well where quality and usability are concerned three in one gaming combo is really nice the only problem is 125 hertz polling on the mouse means it's more casual than it is going to be like for your you know budding cs career or anything like that or your budding ballerin career these days you know you kids with your special abilities and your fancy like uh, uh, only this hero can throw smokes mentality but from the list <laughs> i would pick the razor huntsman mini with the linear reds optical switch as well they do feel really really nice i i like uh, razor linears a lot a lot a lot it's like one of my favorite in-house brand switches and at one and a half right now for 60 percent razor like that's normally what they sell the um uh, black widow uh, TKL that and that's not nearly as nice as this now laptops there are quite a lot of choices but I've selected a few from them which I will do a little bit later but there's actually quite a lot of different levels over here from like six and a half for just a basic you know or six seven grand for like a really basic thing what I would just say to you as buying especially if parents please listen up please don't put your poor child on anything less than eight gig RAM because you will be hindering them more than anything else you will be wasting money on a scale of 500 rand to just make the thing way more usable so 8 gig ram really should be your minimum 16 gig if you want a really nice fluid experience speaking of memory though there are two really nice kits over here the one is a little bit better than the other obviously being a 3600 cl18 like that at that price at one six right now is very very aggressive clever is going to come back to the store by the way um just a little update there for you it, it is coming back we're just waiting on stock over at utx so it will be there eventually but it is coming both of these are really good though the only thing is the cl18 on this is just a bit bad it should be cl16 i don't know why corsair has done that it makes me sad cl18 on 3600 it's just going to be faster monitors we have a number of really cool ones except there's one that's just disgustingly way better than everything else it's this 32 gn 600 i keep talking about this monitor um lg please just send me one for review already maybe permanent review but at five and a half i just can't see this being a bad purchase as a 1440p 165 hertz one millisecond response time monitor it's just disgusting there's some other good panels and stuff there especially the aces honestly these acer xp3s let me just go back to the category area because these these are like this thing is so underappreciated this is one of the best panels i've ever used if you just want a really good like va well, i don't even think this is va i think this is ips actually um if i remember correctly this is this is ips but it, what i was trying to say is the display hdr 400 on this is the only example of display hdr 400 that was better than what i could calibrate manually this is the best monitor 240 hertz that i've ever used 
It really is. It completely beats out everything, even though I never bought one because the price was just a little bit out for me. But if you just want the best, this is the best. But if you just want value, then get the LG because the LG, this thing, 1440p, it's the cheapest way to go 1440p right now by, by leaks. As far as motherboards go, there's only one in there, clearly. But it is a Z590 Plus Tough, which is a really, really nice motherboard, I have to say. Um, it's got some soft power phasing on it because Tough is like kind of the bridge between um, the Prime and the Strix. Now it's sort of filling up that mid-range for, for Asus, but Asus doesn't really do mid-range. They just kind of overkill everything, which is one of the things I really enjoy about the brand. This is a 14 Plus 2, okay? You can put an 11900K on here and overclock it and it'll be stable as. Like, it's, it's just really nicely over dimensioned the built-in sound cards right now the new deck that they've got is so much nicer i use mine I, i'm selling my sound card because they're super comparable between the two on the new deck like there was no real audio difference just power and i've got a headphone amp so whatever as far as power goes but m.2 cooling is really nice like it's just this is just a super super solid choice in motherboard now for some mass action um model o 699 great um the bassless s hyperspeed is also pretty good for the money it does need a battery though model d wireless a lot of people been waiting for it and now it's on special so if you on to ergo the one thing with it i guarantee that they didn't change from the wide version is it's going to be front heavy i do have one awaiting me uh, at eve tech for collection tomorrow so i'll try and go and get that um and get that review up for you but i, I just feel like this is going to be front heavy but maybe it's not a, a deal breaker for some the, the viper is so good and it's like kind of underrated in a way um viper ultimate as well if you can just get the viper ultimate that's like the final one that you need eight kilohertz polling rate dude it's just a little bit soft not that you need it um after two kilohertz it's kind of superfluous at that point and um <clears throat> it actually breaks some games which i found during my review so interesting one but the sensor everything in there I, I, oh, G Pro Super Light just hurts my brain because it's really not that good. It's really, not, it's not a thousand rand better than this is. It's not. As far as cases go, there's two really nice ones from Antec, more mid-range entry-level PCs. The N, this NX290 has a 330mm um, GPU clearance or 320 as far as I remember. The NX320 obviously has a little bit more. They're both very similarly styled, both full front mesh, uh, full mesh at the top that can support 240, 280 more radiators. Check on the pages, you'll be able to see, if I just got take you in here, you'll be able to see the support and the fans and everything for it. But these are, for the money, they're very decent because they come with a fan kit so you don't have to inherently go and buy another whole fan kit for them they come with the pictured fans inside of the build and the performance is pretty decent nx 410s were like bread and butter for a long time a lot of mates bought it very happy with their builds in there the performance of the cooling and everything the stock stuff was pretty damn good good enough that you don't have to replace it for at least a few years and the case doesn't really go anywhere does it so you just put in new fans and carry on as far as power supplies go, there's two really sick ones over here. I think it's quite obvious the 750 watt 80 plus bronze at 899 is a really solid price right now. But this puppy over here is exactly what I run in my PC and it is a monster, dude. It's an absolute savage of a thing. This thing's run 3090s, it's run 3080s, it's run 6900 XTs, you name it. I've put all manner of high-end gpus on it and i never hear it there's no coil line there's no huss no fuss no fan curve nothing it's absolutely silent and just works and it's full modular it's proper genuine full modular so i only have the cables inside my system that i need making my cable management that much easier if you just want to buy a power supply and not have to buy a power supply again feasibly for like 10 years just get a thousand watt i had a 90 my rubbish hunt key 900 watt silver is still chartling on after like nine years because it was at full load for maybe six seven months of its whole life so if you if you over dimension like this then you should be good for a while as far as routers go i think it's obvious the ax3000 is the easy choice between the two between what's here i don't even know what this is if someone can tell me what this is or what it does that would be great but uh yeah tp link ax3000 i've got the ac1900 unit and the interface is like significantly better than what it was they bumped it up like 
a lot. Uh, usability and stuff is way better than it was before. Um, we used to always joke TP-Link stood for toilet paper link, but I don't think you can make that distinction anymore. I think it's come up quite a lot. So if you're looking for a high-end router with some pretty decent management, guest network access, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, even bandwidth limiting, this can do it all. As far as SSDs goes, there's only one, but it is a good one. It's an Acer 1TB Gen 3 with pretty much peaks on the read at least. The right, not quite. It's about 600 megabytes per second. Um, but at 2700 dot, you're going to really notice it, to be honest. It's quite build quality and everything seems pretty decent. And I believe these do have a DRAM controller as well. Now for Thrustmaster, a fun one. There's lots of really awesome stuff over here. So to navigate through it, your basic host is set up is what you're going to want if you're getting into some flight sim like war thunder for instance and you're playing a little bit of realistic mode or something to that effect then this is the sort of level you're going to want to look at you can uh, get the one without the hotas without the external throttle on it but it's just so much it, that that has that much space to control whereas you've got a whole sort of angle of tilt to be able to control your throttle or, or the throttle your throttle more accurately with that there's like some other really nice things like these t80s i just love them they're like a lot of fun um like arcade style sort of band driven wheels there's no force feedback or anything on them but the but the actual uh, precision of it is more than high enough for you to have actually a pretty damn good experience not a full sim like don't expect to be the best in a set of course over this but you could actually play the game with it but if you want something a little bit more serious in that line the tmx force is the one definitely want to go for these are normally like four and a half grand and they're xbox controllers so they work with all the xbox ports onto the pc which is really nice so i do like that quite a lot and having one on a sim rig that i've used for a couple of hours um, I have taken off the off the rubberizing on the side because I'm a I'm a rally sport kind of guy. So yeah, you're on on the wheel a lot. You're doing a, a lot of this a lot because you're doing 160 past trees. So yeah, it's um, always nice when you can correct and not hit the tree. And that thing, the feedback, the build quality, everything at four and a half grand, it was, I felt it was already pretty good. But three grand now, it's a huge discount on that. Then you've got the full full Hotas flight pack for T6000, T16000M set with the rudder pedals as well, which is the exact ones that they sell in the uh, uh, separately. So you can see the value over here is pretty good for the pack. You're getting everything that you would need to do a full flight sim experience. This is for, you know, obviously quite serious environments and then the t300s this thing came down in price quite a lot and it's got a clutch pedal which is really nice app and i believe you can mod these you can put in different springs into them and you can mod the wheel clearly you can remove it from the hub so the hub is like kind of separate from that like it's really nice like this is this is now getting into like a spec and a level that's very serious this is for people that want a full sim experience with proper feedback and stuff with a clutch pedal you know so you can clutch kick kick drift and that sort of stuff and heel toe this is this is going to be for you Alrighty, so first of the upgrade kit suggestions is going to be this 12400 if it does have a b660 motherboard so you can use that full 3600 megahertz from the memory and as you can see by the power phasing and stuff here it's decent it's not going to you know overclock the 12900k but for this processor it's going to be more than enough and if you did want to upgrade to a 12700 or something like that in the future you would be able to you're just not going to be able to overclock one because of the chipset and two because it just doesn't have the power to make sure that those overclocks and stuff are stable but the world's got more than enough as far as premium feature set goes it's got dual m.2 isolated sound card enough usbs and stuff that you're not going to go one thing like it's a very very solid gaming platform all of that for seven grand is sort of why i have to suggest it because that's the price of like a, just a premium processor so you can get a whole you know motherboard process in ram that is going to yield really good results if you don't believe me just go check the review on tech power up and you'll see how good this 12400f really is the next one is way more premium and a bit of a weird one because the motherboard is actually for me the weak point of this bundle definitely an 8 plus 2 is enough to run a 130 watt chip but there's no going to be no 
like extra PBO. You're not going to be able to get more stable overclocks. This is a 4.8 gigahertz turbo official. I get mine to 5 gigahertz because I've got a 14 plus 2 on my X570 Tough Plus Wi-Fi. So I can push it harder because I've got a 280 mil with push pull, you know, fans strapped to it and stuff. And while it says 105 watts, it will easily use 130 if it got the headroom to do so. So the motherboard's not gonna really let you do that, unfortunately, but at the stock clocks for this, it's still gonna run like an absolute monster. And if you're in a crossover environment like myself, where you're doing media and gaming or streaming and stuff, this is a really good bundle at 12K. Normally the processor would sell for that. So the price has come down enough that for 12K now, you can get a motherboard, you can get pretty decent memory with it as well with the with the Corsair 3600s and then a 240 mil cooler to make sure that it does still get to those default boosts and stay there pretty comfortably I don't I just don't know if that power phasing is going to be enough it's literally the only thing on the whole motherboard that I can see that I'm, I would you know up spec if possible the m.2 cooling is nice these new sound cards with these new decks are just so much better than they were before it's got built-in wi-fi 6 as well so it's nice it's nicely rounded it's uh and if you just want something out of box that's gonna basically fly and you can literally put any gpu you want onto this and you're gonna get to like close to the maximum out of it now for the laptops, this HP struck me as a really good deal because it's the 1155G7. These G7 chips run really fast, especially on the single core performance. So if you're looking at using this for like work or development stuff, uh, you know, coding and that sort of stuff, this is going to run really, really nicely. Full HD screen as well. It's coming with 16 gig RAM and a 512 gig SSD. You can still upgrade it to 32 gig RAM and a 2 TB SSD as well if you want. So it has got some headroom uh, around it but this is the package that i would suggest with this is 16 gig ram plus the 512 gig ssd for as a working tool this is going to be absolutely fantastic but look here, here you say, we are here to game. Well, HP's got you sorted out with Invictus, which is actually one of the highest rated chassis on notebook check and that is a pedantic on pedantic review that those guys do. It's like what I do is like maybe 20% of what they do in a review. Okay. Once again, they have a team of like 20 people to do this, which obviously helps. But at the price point right now, for what this is with a 3050 Ti at 18 grand with a 16 gig RAM and a 1 TB SSD, this is an absolute steal right now. This is the best priced laptop in this category by absolute leagues and i love that it has the 16.1 inch screen so it's like a slightly bigger laptop but they've kept it slim and sleek and very understated and you could put this on a boardroom table there's no rgb on the back you could put this on a boardroom table and not look like a 12 year old which is great for, for people that are in that life cycle and then it's got a numpad as well just to further bolster that sort of crossover you know maybe design slash gamer environment that you might be in. This thing just strikes me as the absolute deal on, on across EVTech right now. I think this is the best priced laptop versus its performance. But if you want something a little bit more premium, look at this Dell G15 because it's got the brand new 5800H. that has got an eight core super monster of a processor um, that completely thumbs it like a 2700x or even this would be comparable with a 3700x but mobile again okay, which is kind of disgusting then it's got a 3060 it's got a full hd screen with 120 hertz refresh rate it's a little bit dim honestly on the display so if you are looking at design sort of stuff i would actually rather go with the victors that got a bit of a better rating overall that's its only real weakness though the chassis is its monitor everything outside of that is absolutely incredible and if you were then to just attach like a pro art sort of design level monitor to it then you sort of nip that problem in the bud but the mobile power that you're getting over here and this is the 32 gig ram 1 tv spec that i've got here at 23k my boy shaky literally streams and games off of this unit simultaneously and it can do all of that encoding and gaming workload absolutely no problem so if you were looking at it for like a design slash work environment or gaming just heavy gaming the 5800h just doesn't play it's quite savage <laughs> But the last suggestion and sort of the ultra premium spec is going to go to the Omen 16 because 3070 mobile is nuts. It's absolutely nuts. It completely thumps my 2070 Super. Um, it's very borderline being basically a 2080 Super in a lot of results. It's kind of soft. 
But this chassis as well, since I tested it, just look at it. It's just so damn pretty. Like, it's so clean. I'm really liking this direction from HP. This angular bladed sort of design and the way that they've got it set up is just... Oh, it's just so 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 pretty so with a 32 gig ram and a one tb uh, ssd at uh, well you can see you can go up to two tb as well it's got the new 11800h which is also an eight call with absolute disgusting performance like oh and the monitor is one of the absolute best that i've ever used hp monitors right now on their notebooks are also on notebook check some of the highest rated as far as color gamut actual color gamut testing and stuff go they're very very good they are very good panels that they are using in this and then you're running it off the 3070 so you're going to be able to get like nearly 100 fps in any game that you want at 1440p on a 16.1 at 165 hertz it is very nice it, even the 3060 i tested it was a really nice experience it, the 3060 struggled a little bit at native with ultra premium things like cyberpunk and stuff which just breaks pcs all over the place but beyond that sort of level it was really good and that was like a way less powerful GPU than what's in here. This thing is sort of disgusting. It is a very expensive purchase, but I can vouch for it. The only thing with these chassis, their biggest weakness is definitely their battery life. If you are going to be going around and on the road, you are going to use, have to use the MUX switch to turn off the NVIDIA GPU to get the most out of the battery. But beyond that, they're absolute pearly, mate. Anywho, that is all I have for you this week. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you probably tomorrow. There will be a review out and then I've got another one planned for Monday. So until then, hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side.